coming out tonight on this dreary, awful, ugly day that we desperately need the rain. So, thank you. Um, any changes to our agenda? Uh, just a change in the arrows and emission certificate. Uh, Terry Savins updated and added uh, three more items on that list. We'll discuss those when we get to that agenda item. And uh, there was an oversight as far as minutes in your packet from the last meeting. Uh, Judy has provided those minutes here tonight, but you have not had a chance to review them. So if you'd like to take a few minutes to do that. Brian, do you need some more time to look at them? Sure. Okay. So we're just looking at the minutes. Um, they weren't in our packet. I don't know if you want to take a few minutes oh, to look I'm at sorry. it. Hmm? Okay. They weren't in our packet. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Jess, there was a change to the errors and emissions certificate. Okay. Terry has added three more properties on there okay. for discussion during that agenda item. We're going to talk about that. It's a new arrangement. Yeah, it is. I was. Okay. Make sure you're here. You're saying that? Good. Yeah, we're good. Good. Okay. Um, do we have any approval? Uh, motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? Second. So I hear a uh, motion to second. Uh, any discussion? I'm good. I'm just wondering, do on page three, uh, number 15, do we have to put in the bid numbers there for the Duhamel Pit rec Reclamation? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure if they were set, if the dollar amount was set yeah. that evening. Was it yeah. set? Yeah. It was okay. pretty controversial. Yeah. I remember it being controversial, but I didn't know the number. All right, I'll put the... It was, it was set per hour, but yeah. not, not yeah. the whole. The right. Total wasn't set. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motions have passed. All right. Next is um, liquor control. No liquor control this All evening. Right. Next on the agenda, new business. Accept resignation of Jennifer Andrews, Morristown Conservation Committee. Ron, would you like to speak to that as a co-chair? All I can say is that she was looking for approval to be recognized as resigning, and we've uh, sent out a notice on 
front porch forum for our agency. Plus, I believe there'll be an article in the new system. That's where we're at. Good. Good. Thank you, Ron. I make a motion we approve it. Oh, thank you. With a thank you. I believe there's a thank you card in your packet, Judy. In the purple box. In the purple That's to well. sign. To sign. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a, a motion to do I hear a second? A second. Okay, a motion to second. All those in favor accepting Jennifer's resignation say aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Next, accept and sign errors and admission certificate. So there are four parcels uh, in front of you this evening. We'll take them one at a time, but a motion at the end to either approve all or approve selected members, numbers of them will be your decision. The first one is uh, the property owner, Sean Foley. There was a, a change in the total value, assessed value of his property due to a sale of a 20.2 acre parcel, which was combined with the parcel initially. Acreage and value did not get removed after this, the sale occurred. So that's why there's a reduction of $42,100 to the overall value of Mr. Foley's property. Copley Hospital. This one was a, a clerical error. Uh, when Copley Hospital purchased the the meadow across from what is the National Guard Armory. Um, they also purchased Mansfield Orthopedics, the building uh, and the property itself. Terry, uh, our assessor, she worked with the state of Vermont because Copy Hospital's properties are non-taxable, but she wasn't sure if the meadow was non-taxable or if the business, she you know, didn't know how that was supposed to be one continuous piece. It was all purchased at the same time. so or so we thought um, the state ruled that only the property with the building on it would become non-taxable. The meadow itself is undeveloped, should, should stay in a taxed uh, state or status. When Terry uh, adjusted that, she did not click the button on her screen to remove Mansfield Orthopedics, causing a significant change uh, in value here. So. The Mansfield Orthopedics property, building and all, uh, had a total uh, value of $1.334 million. So that taxable amount of property is being completely removed. It's a significant drop in the taxable income to the town uh, in the $30,000 range. So Terry was uh, very apologetic. Uh, she has no idea how she would have missed doing that. She's very, very thrilled. Um, that was mistake made in-house. Uh, the Novus uh, Marshall Solar LLC, uh, the solar accounts do not get charged education tax at the local level. They pay their education tax directly to the state. So only the municipal tax is assessed locally on the, the solar project. So there's uh, a change uh, of not, uh, nothing in total value. It is simply on this because we will not be collecting the state tax, okay. state education tax from them, okay? And that goes along with the last one also, which is the salvage yard solar. Uh, same thing, you see the appraised value there uh, with no difference, no change in the value, just simply a change in where the monies get paid to. And those are the four. And that really doesn't affect our income, basically, because that money just went right to the state anyhow, right? Correct. Okay, do I hear a motion to um, approve the, accept the errors and admissions certificate? I'll make a motion to accept the errors and omissions certificate as presented. I'll second it. And motion to approve and second it. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And, okay, it's been approved. Number four, discuss the request to, re oops, did I miss something? I did. Approve leasing the two. 2022 Dodge Durango for the Morrisville PD. So you may remember that you've already approved this. This is an accounting uh, function. Uh, we are in the middle of the audit and the auditors picked up on the fact that we didn't get a, uh, um, a motion in front of you for the lease. It's, it's in the budget. Um, the lease was done, but we didn't bring that in front of you for the official stamp of approval for the lease to occur. So that uh, was something they just as an oversight. It was just a, a clerical note on their part, and we're just correcting that now. So we just need a motion to approve. A motion to approve the lease of the, the Dodge Durango. 
correct. So I'll make a motion to approve the lease of the 2022 Dodge Durango with Joe Sissonis. Chrysler Complex for four years for a total lease price of $53,540.08. Second. Motion to approve and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the motion is passed. Discuss the request to rename Bridge on Bridge Street to the France, Francis Favreau. Is it thing to say it right? Favreau. Favreau Bridge. This is meant for open discussion by the board members. Francis Favreau served our community for over 40 years, uh, holding about every uh, uh, department head position at Copley Hospital you can think of, most notably the lab. Uh, he served our community more directly here in this office as a member of the Listers, and uh, uh, his resume is this long of volunteer hours that he's put in for our community. Francis is a failing health, living with his son in Middlebury at this point in time. Uh, he remains in touch with us on occasion. Uh, it was a, a suggestion that was brought to, our, to us by folks in the community that it would be nice to be able to put a name to something significant here in the village where Francis spent, raised his family and spent his uh, working years. Yeah, I just want to add, we got a very nice letter from six different town employees supporting this. Mm -hmm. And the bridge has no name right now. Its name was, correct? It is, which causes <laughs> a little confusion because there are three major bridges on Bridge Street, the two of <coughs> Lake Lamoille. Um, so it's either the bridge by the old, the former Tomlinson's or the, the first bridge in the middle down on, past the bypass. <laughs> yeah, it gets wordy. <laughs> we can at least fix it with uh, with a, a naming of this bridge and inappropriate to have a, a plaque affixed to it with his name if you so choose. And if the select board has approved this tonight, the, uh, the plaque will be via donation of taxpayer expense. There's already a bunch of people throw money into that for the plaque. How much do you think a plaque would cost? I have no idea. This is the first step of the naming. If we get past this step, I'll figure that out tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a few hundred dollars, my guess. You may want to put it on each side of the bridge. Depends on the right, side. Right, right. That would make sense. Nothing extraordinary. Eric, as far as you know, is this kind of uh, one of the first times we've named a bridge in town? I believe it may be. We've referenced them many times by family names or farm names uh, over the years, but it's just a local local naming, not, not an official naming by the, the governing body. <coughs> I think it's a good idea. I like the idea. You want to make a motion? Yeah. Sure. I'll make a motion to name the Easterly Bridge directly next door to the 802 liquor store on Bridge Street, the Francis Favreau Bridge with a plaque installation narrow. I'll second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I think it's a great idea. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Thank you. Well, it's nice to do something while someone's actually alive to right. realize it versus they die and then we'll mm -hmm. do something after the fact. So thank you. We're trying to be a little proactive here. Francis isn't aware of this, right? <laughs> well, it's, Francis will probably hear about this after tonight, but as of right now, this is a secret. Mm. It was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving to number five, approve new private road, Toulouse Lane. Locations here. We're at 377. Correct. So this is the going to be the site of the townhomes being built uh, as you're on Jersey Heights, looking at the front of the Irving gas station. To the left of that, the property is being developed with 20, 23 townhomes. Correct. Right? No, this is a this is the. One more across from Bob Henney's property, the big yellow three-story building. This is where the, um, it's the green bungalow. And it's oh, okay. formerly owned by the Mandigo family. Mm -hmm. That will be torn down and there's an application from the development review board for nine townhouses on that property. So this is the new, right now it's a driveway. It's gonna become a road for nine units. So <clears> that's where they know road name for either Belusa or Paul USA or Chestnut Way is in front of the board. Is that that'll be between Best and and Cheney's driveway? It's no, bull, it's no, bull. right next to literally parallel Dave Cheney's driveway. Well, Dave Cheney doesn't live here anymore, but Dave Cheney's former driveway. 
Dave sold his house to the developer. Oh. Dave's gone. But it is called Cheney Lane, isn't it? I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Cheney Lane will probably be discontinued because Cheney Lane is no longer going to be the driveway for the development. It's now just a single family driveway. Yeah. It was suggested that this simply move Cheney Lane over to this driveway, but the developer did not want to name Cheney Lane and the new owner. <laughs> What is the significance of Toulouse? That's the name of the LLC. It's all I know. I don't know what it means. Okay. All right. I don't this is a developer from out of town, right? So, yes. From so. No, I think his main residence is not in Florida, but yes. That permit, that <coughs> Sorry? That permit, I could address the board now. Oh, mm -hmm. We wouldn't know if it had been approved. It doesn't. It doesn't come before us. I know. Well, the the naming of the if I can help the the naming of a private road like this is a requirement in order to get approval for a subdivision permit. It's step one. They have to have a road name in order for a reference to be made. So, the approval process for the subdivision follows. Correct. Correct. When a permit when a permit is issued, it's got to have a road name to it. So, this is the preamble to to a permit. So that will be on that application on the October twelfth DRB hearing. And when the DRB hears the application, they have a agreed upon road name. So we don't call it the Long Bridge or the Short Bridge by the liquor store or the bridge closer to Katie's Falls. So we have an agreed upon name. I'll make a motion to approve the new private road to Lista Lane and authorize Eric to sign for the board. I'll second it. I have a motion and second. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Approve new private road, Rose Alley. This is a proposed subdivision off from uh, Park Street 15A. Um, I'm going to give it a, a loose location. Uh, if you know where the Persico residence is, mm -hmm. uh, across the road from that, there's a parcel of property that's owned. They're looking to establish a three parcel subdivision, 27 plus or minus acres that they own. Uh, with 2.75 acre lots plus the remainder would be the third lot. And again, this is uh, in advance of going through the process of getting permits for a subdivision. They need to name a road going in there. Is this the, um, do we have this information in front of us? I think this is the only way to have. Yeah. Yeah. Map goes for something it. else. <laughs> So Todd, you might know the answer to this, but it's, it's that land is right by the river. Is that that's not floodplain? Uh, no, the floodplain comes into the property a little bit. These lots are very far from the floodplain. Floodplain is more of an elevation and location. These lots are going to floodplain. Okay. It's a family in town. They're doing two lots for their kids. So uh, this is a uh, warrant for uh, one of my approvals, October fourth. <coughs> Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the new private road, Rose Alley, and authorize Eric to sign for the board. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion is passed. Okay, parking report. So in front of you, you have the parking report of the committee that uh, volunteers they joined together and did some extensive studies of our downtown and came up with a final product here with some recommendations. Uh, this report has been placed on the town's website as well for the public input. Um, there, are, there are several different suggestions here, all of which deserve you know, their own time to be discussed, I think. Um, some of them may be easier to make a decision on than others. But uh, I think the, this group has done a phenomenal job of bringing you some existing options versus options that would uh, encounter large tax dollars being invested. So uh, I'm not looking for any motion tonight. I think it would be best if we left it on the website and get the word out to folks to go and take a look at it and see what they think. Uh, get some public input, but just my suggestion, you're welcome to make a motion tonight and accept anything uh, that you'd like out of the report. Um, there's, you know, th this doesn't have an impl implementation timeline attached to it. It is simply the results of their study itself. But the, 
There is, but we, it wasn't included in the packet to the board. The, um, the, uh, one of the very first things that they said was we need to update the actual parking study that was done in 2019 to more accurately reflect what's going on is because uh, as of next spring, the Village Center apartments will be inhabited. The vehicles associated with that uh, will we'll put pressure on our municipal parking lot. But by next spring, we should have a resurfaced parking lot and uh, a new strike plan that adds more parking spaces. So what we, uh, we really should do an updated study on that. Likely during budget season, we'll see that in our in our budget request for uh, have an independent firm come in and take a look. I know the I think it was page three. I didn't mark it, and I should have. Um, one of them, the overnight parking, was confusing to me. Is it confusing to you too? I I couldn't visualize it. Maybe it was page six. I'd have to go back and reread it and make notes on it, but. That would, that would be helpful just for us to be able to have some time to digest it and ask questions. I don't know if anyone's here to talk about this. I staffed the committee, and Jess was on the committee as well. Um, one thing we can get through the next meeting is implementation plan. Uh, what basically the first thing, the first step in trying to uh, formalize some of these opportunities and improvements would be to simply uh, keep an agenda item on uh, your coming agendas for a parking committee discussion. There are certain things in the implementation plan that talks about action at the October 17th or whatever it is left for meeting goes down from there. Action by the spring, action by next fall. So uh, if you could put a space holder on the, your agendas for a parking discussion at the next, uh, the needs the next uh, six months to a year or something like that, I think that would actually accomplish, give you, give you all the ability to accomplish a lot of what's in that report, just with those agenda items so we can decide to act on things or not. Okay. And then we could ask, Then, when those items came up, we could ask some specific uh, questions about those specific sure, items. Sure, yes. Yeah. Yep. Seems to make more sense. Sure. So you'd like just to hold off on specific questions for tonight? You can fire away if you'd like. I mean, I staff the committee, so I should be able to, I don't want to speak to the committee, but I can answer most of the questions. Well, this one's, I mean, you brought up the overnight parking. And Mike, I mean, I understand what overnight parking is, the concept, though it's pretty easy to understand, but. Like in, and this was in relation to the Union Bank parking lot. At what point does overnight parking end? And at what point do when you get all those employees from the Union Bank and the boards coming in in the morning? Is there, there, is there, there are four talks about any, um, there are certain spaces now that are designated for long term overnight parking for those, if those cars are there in the morning. It's not that big a deal. There are spaces where it does snow here for 40 to 60 days a year when they're actively removing snow from the municipal parking lot or the Union Bank parking lot. So it talks about opportunities to assign more overnight parking. If you walk out in that parking lot tonight after this meeting, there's gonna be three cars and 60 spaces out there. There are tumbleweeds blowing through it. So there's an opportunity there, but you have to manage it well to make sure those cars overnight are gone by 8 a.m. when people start to show up. And one of the ways to do that would be to, any new overnight parking created in that lot, which the town does pay to maintain and file, would be to assign those during the day as two-hour parking spots. So come 8 a.m. or come 10 a.m., those cars are gone, they get a ticket, and then they'll learn not to park there during the day. So it will take a, it's gonna take a bit of a learning curve, and it's gonna take actually the real pieces, the, a lot of the, the things, the recommendations of the report really depend on the police department being able to actually fund a future position, uh, the meter person position to actually enforce these regulations. Without enforcement, this all falls apart. He used the word meter. I would say but maybe we could just not use the word meter. I didn't understand. I don't think meter is appropriate. Before we get deluged with emails yeah. tomorrow, I want to make sure yeah, no, we're not going to put the meters in the report. <laughs> and also, there's still um, there, there's um, a relationship with the Union Bank in terms of like uh, who manages that and all that, right? Yeah, it's not that's not a town, that's just, not town property. We just plow it and maintain it. Right, but yeah, so that's. Yeah. I just want to be, be clear on that. That's not town property. Correct, right. yeah. Well, the same can be said for Don's point to uh, the yeah. Coffee Missile parking lot. Right now, we really limit ourselves to a certain number of overnight spaces. The report calls for allowing the other spaces that are currently not allowed overnight to be overnight uh, with a flashing snow emergency beacon. And those cars uh, are gone if the emergency beacon is going off or those. Most of those parking spaces are assigned to our parking or 15 minute parking during the day anyway. So 
is going to be gone by the time day of the community is coming regardless. The uh, long-term storage of resident parking in our public parking lots downtown doesn't benefit anyone. That's something we want to avoid here. This, the public needs to be available. The parking, excuse me, needs to be available for these businesses every day. We need that turnover. Otherwise, we're going to the problems. You were talking about um, having them park more towards the Oslo. Is that right? Uh, if there's no emergency, is what the report talks about. Is oh, um, yeah. there's no emergency beacon? Yes, to allow. I mean, if you want to create more around parking. The select board could do it tonight and say we're going to uh, tell Kevin to assign parking spots on the river side of the Oslo parking lot. And during a storm emergency, it's expected that overflow parking, or if you don't have a long-term parking spot, you're going down there during snow emergency. There, there are a lot of recommendations like that in the report. It's pretty lengthy. It's a good report. The committee spent a lot of time there. I think you'll find it useful. I think it was the the overnight parking at the municipal parking lot was confusing to me how that was going to work out. I couldn't visualize it. So I'll read back through it again and get yeah, call, better call. questions. Yeah. I think the implementation plan when I send that to you all tomorrow will help too. Okay. Kind of crystallize everything step one, step two, step three. All right. So we don't have to act on this tonight. We don't have to make any motions, just that. No, just wanted to hear about how we wanted to take the plan and pick it apart moving forward. Which ones? I mean, the one you're talking about overnight parking and then flashing signals in the municipal parking lot. If that was a plan the select board opted to go through, th there's some money invested there, obviously, but we're going to resurface that parking lot next summer. So if this is something that you really want to do, I'm going to bring this to you sooner rather than later because it means digging in power lines to get those for those flashing lights or depending on where we're putting the flashing lights. Are we putting them in the middle? Or are we putting them just in the outside edges? There's some, some planning to be done there. And if, if so, then we'd need to fund that. So budget season is boss. And how would those lights work in, in for the people who live in that area? Uh, they would be under the, if uh, under this plan, as I understand it, everybody, it would be free reign. Everybody's under the same parking regulation. There is no favoritism to any one building or another. It's when the flashing lights are on, you have to find someplace else to park. I'm just thinking about the people who live above the old Kaplan's. Understood. People living there, would these lights be intrusive? Oh. Um, you put casing so it would be that size of the platform for Kaplan's, for example, the old Kaplan's building. There are ways to work around. Yeah, I think the only ask tonight would be to have this back on the agenda for your next select board meeting so we can talk about it again in the implementation plan. Give you sure. all some time to digest it, hear public feedback, and move on from there. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Tom. Uh, thank Just you. to echo what others have said, it is a good report. You guys did a nice job. And, you know, I, I missed a few meetings, but yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, moving on, discuss altering West High Street. So West High Street, at the end of the, the street, is the residence, um, part of the Farrell Family Trust. And I'll write down that one. And our highway goes into their living room. Oh. Kind of an interesting concept, but it's not a garage. But anyway, they are asking for us to shorten our road, uh, basically to their property line. Um, it really is not a, a big ask. It's something the highway department has looked at. When they plow West High Street, they back into their yard and push the snow back toward the street anyway. It's, there's no need for a hammerhead or a traffic circle at the end. Um, and it's, there is a process that we have to go through in order to make this happen. Uh, so you'll be seeing a notice go out to uh, all those folks that live there or about the property uh, as a warning for a hearing that'll happen on November 21st. There will be a site visit that same evening, half an hour before the meeting starts. Uh, I realize the time of year what it is, but uh, we're, we're following statute for notification times and, and dates and process. So the 21st of November is the earliest we could get it on and still meet our, our deadlines. Considering we have a large hearing coming up here for the zoning bylaw review, that's probably going to be your only agenda item that night. There won't be any other agenda items, so this means I'm going to be packing stuff into the next meeting. So, this really means that um, what is it? West High Street just is going to be shortened, basically. Yeah, right. It is. It's, uh, they have a there's a property line right there. I, the the map we have shows a a pin right beside or near the road itself. So 
we would likely use that. We'd have to have a surveyor come in and just to do actually freshen up the survey for our road to uh, now officially de delineate its length from that pin back to the main road. So. Would we um, be responsible for the cost of that? You, you know, that's a great question. We yeah. actually chuckled about that today. Since our road goes into their living room, I really think we have a responsibility to remove our road from their, their house. So. I actually had that survey already. She had the, the property, her property survey, but our, our road by statute has to be surveyed. So, 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 the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it, the, shows, it shows the truncated road at the property line. Right. But you'd have the same survey to go back and correct the road and lay it out. Yep. So a little bit of process that'll be coming back in front of you on November 21st. Again, it'll be a, I give it out this early because it, there will be a 5.30 site visit that night. It won't be a six o'clock. It'll be a site visit 5.30, you'll see it. So you have a visual, then we'll come back here and reconvene the hearing. Uh, and at that hearing, you'll vote yes or no, whether or not to truncate the road and, and move it to its new location. And if that passes, that's fine. The hearing closes, and then we go into the regular select board meeting that night. So it doesn't hurt the, um, the road crew in plowing that? It, it doesn't restrict them, no. So do we need to do anything about this is just information only? It pretty much was to explain the process. We haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, usually you'll see this happening with class four roads. Uh, where folks have properties at the very end of them and nobody uses the class four. So the, they'll ask the town to uh, shorten their, their class four road, leave it a trail or whatever the, the case may be. So. Okay, thank you. So discuss Halloween street shutdown for 2022. We bring this in front of you every year simply to uh, for an awareness piece, but we need your permission as a board to um, close any roads in town. So Halloween has been successful with no injuries, um, and we'd like to continue that. Obviously, our highway department comes out in great force and helps us block off some of the roads. Uh, there's a map in your packet. I think it's the last, the last page. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. It's the standard, uh, it's the ones we've done for years. You have uh, Maple Street, East Cherry and Stone Street, Cherry Avenue, and then there's Court and Summer Street, Union Street, Harrison Avenue. Congress Street is, uh, is left open. We have personnel that are stationed with uh, um, devices blocking the road, not monitoring traffic in and out of those areas. Locals are allowed access, but uh, all of the traffic is kept out. I'll make a motion that we approve it. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion, a second. Any discussion? It's a nice thing for the kids. I enjoyed that last year with my daughter. And the um, highway department did a awesome job. This highway fire. Highway fire. Sorry. Oh, there's a lot police of department. Yeah. Everyone, every town employee. Yes. yes. A lot sorry. of them going in. Yeah. Yes. Thank On, you, Brian. Just thinking about Halloween. Does Sarah usually collect candy? She's done that in the past, but I don't think she did it the last couple of years. I don't think she spearheaded that. Okay. Just I shouldn't have brought it up. Probably. It's okay. Apologize to Sarah for me. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Old business. There's no old business tonight. All right, moving on. Approved warrants. Make a motion. We approve them. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion a second to approve warrants. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Town administrator's report. It's been a while since I. Uh, Updated you, so I had to dig back a little bit to, to find all the stuff that the town employees have been involved in and what's been happening around uh, the operation. So some of this may be a little old, but uh, the remodeling of our upstairs is progressing. The only item left yet to install is the windows. The holes have been cut in the building. The old windows have been sealed up. The uh, many splits have been installed. And uh, so we're just waiting on the windows, which we're told will be in in October. And they'll be back to take some measures to keep the cool air out. Um, as a result of that, Tricia has been very flexible about working. She's trying to uh, keep her uh, 
involved there. Her, her job is really non-typical, Monday to Friday, 8 to 4. She's a, she, she works weekends, nights, holidays, and all kinds of stuff doing her work. So she's able to be flexible enough with it um, and been very gracious to work with. Uh, we're moving uh, the HR department is going to be up there. The finance department will eventually be up there once the windows are in. And then phase two of the project will, uh, with the voter approval at town meeting, will occur next year to put the walls and the drop ceiling in. But it's allowing us the space we need to expand the current staffing. Uh, with our new uh, recreation program director currently has no office. She's been gracious as well. Uh, she's been working out of uh, tables and corners just to get by until we can get the the uh, renovation completed. Uh, highway department, very, very busy continuously. Uh, they're finishing up their Act 64, excuse me, Act 64 clean water work in Sterling Valley and Mud City Loop. You'll notice up uh, the Moran Loop up toward the Bedell Farm Road. Is, uh, the ditches have all been redefined. They've been armored, uh, culverts being replaced. Uh, the same thing occurred without culvert replacement. On Mud City Loop in the area of the new culvert that was placed a couple of years ago after the Halloween storm. And uh, so both of those steep hills sloping down toward the brook, the ditches have been redefined, armored, um, in getting us closer to our being in line with ANR's request for the Act 64 compliance by 2036. We have a long ways to go, but it's a good start. Uh, the pavement. Uh, this year, our paving is completed on Stagecoach Road and Randolph Road, and they started today with a three-inch base coat for Garfield Road. Uh, they will continue that work tomorrow, but they have other obligations. Uh, the weather has hindered them just a little bit here, so they didn't get as much done as they wanted to, but they said that they'd be back before the end of October to put the final coat on Garfield Road, and that completes our paving major paving projects for the year. Uh, they have been out patch paving in several locations on uh, some of the, the lesser trafficked roads, but those roads have not seen much attention for years. I would point out Sunset Drive being one of them, uh, Town Hill Road, uh, Damar Road. There's their residential streets. Uh, typically, they're, they're dead end and they're, they're trafficked by the folks that live on the streets, but they have not seen pavement in many years. So we're trying to patch the really bad spots uh, and hold the road together until we can get to a point where those become our focus and we're still looking a year or two down the road. Hey, Tony. What do you call a patch pavement? What we did on Cody Hill, that, that strip <laughs> there that was depressed with that one. That's the worst pavement job I've ever seen in my life. Well, it was done by our guys. We did you know how they did it? I do know how they did it. How they do it? They put the blacktop in the depressed rut, the tire rut, and used the ba a bucket loader to back drag it in, and then we put the roller to it afterwards. Terrible. So is that going to get fixed next year or what? Uh, the plan right now is for Cody Hill, Walton Road, and Center Road to get paved next year. But that all depends on budget, depends on the price of blacktop. This man right here told me there was all kinds of money in the paving budget. Well, Where's he go? This year's, <laughs> That's his department now. <laughs> this, this year's paving budget is being spent on the roads I just talked about that are getting paved. Uh, we're also using some of that money for some of this patch paving. Uh, that's not patch paving. That's terrible. It looks terrible too. Well, it, it's fixing the worst of the worst to hold the roads together until we can get the real work done, Tony. Maybe that's, the roads shouldn't be as bad as they are. Start with. Well, I'll I'll certainly remember that when I'm building the budget for the paving next year, and we'll yeah. increase it substantially. We can certainly pay enough taxes. <laughs> uh, sidewalk repair. We had a. Uh, sidewalk repair that needed to be done off the municipal parking lot. It was the, one of the last ones of the old brick sidewalk. It had decayed terribly. Uh, so that, that came up and uh, got replaced. Uh, there's a pre-construction meeting Wednesday of this week uh, with the, the players uh, for the filtration project in the municipal parking lot. That's going to take off on the 26th. It will be a disruption of the parking in the municipal parking lot. We're going to try and do it as sections at a time so we can uh, keep that footprint as small as possible for as long as possible, but it's going to require also we're having the three manholes rebuilt that go underneath the municipal parking lot. They are the old base concrete structure with masonry brick up to the surface and they're crumbling and falling apart. So there's no sense doing this project without putting some of our taxpayers dollars into that to reestablish those with good uh, manholes, precast manholes. So that'll be going on over the next few weeks. 
And I wanted to bring attention to an email that came out earlier today that you were all uh, in on, but for the public's knowledge, Corey Bovier, who is our assistant rescue chief, was uh, recognized by Chief Mapes in an email uh, for her achieving 20 years of service as a nationally registered, registered EMS provider. And she's been with the town now for almost eight years. And does a great job. And those are my notes. Congratulations to Corey. She's not yes. here, is she? No. no. Um, Eric, I was wondering about uh, the work being done in the in the municipal parking lot. I'm assuming there'll be some signs up so people will be aware ahead of time. Yep, we're gonna we'll put out a blast. Uh, area agencies, uh, news agencies, whatnot, and uh, release the information. But um, they'll see the cones going up after uh, Rocktoberfest, which is the weekend of the 24th. So the cones will go up blocking off that back corner. We've been in touch with the contractors for those center apartments because most of the folks they have in there are parking there. They've begun moving their Connex storage boxes uh, to make room for this as well, so. Good. Good, thank you. Any other questions for Eric? I do. About the gear that you up at the Marshdown floor. Can we, I guess, right. should we go back to addressing, like standing up, saying your name and, oh. yeah. yeah, can we do that? We don't, wait, wait a sec, we don't have the, I want you to be recognized. We don't have the uh, microphone yet. Hold on. Wait, Ron. If you bring up the subject about the, uh, 20, 20 by 20 square foot deer disclosure or something like Exclusion. that. Anyway, Brett Exclusion. Anyway, here to talk about it. But we're looking for permission because that's town property. And I'm with the Morristown Conservation Commission and we sort of do things up there. But this is a project by State of Vermont, uh, Forest and Parks, Brett. So if I could just jump in, the reason it's not on the agenda tonight is because the paperwork that the state sent to us had listed the Conservation Commission as the approving authority. And I'm waiting for a rewritten permission slip from the state that shows the select board as the authority. That's why I didn't get here. I never got the slip. I don't know where it is in the process. As soon as I get it, we'll have it there. But what, what he's talking about is an exclusionary zone. It will be a fence off here in the Morristown Town Forest, 20 by 20, where they will have uh, trees and growth inside of that zone that will be protected from wildlife. So they'll see how it grows in relationship to the area around it to see whether or not the deer are having a positive negative impact or any impact whatsoever to that area. It's a, a 10 year uh, look at that property and <coughs> what's going on with the deer herd there. 20 what, acres or feet? 20 feet by 20 oh. feet, correct? It's a small plot. Uh -huh. 20 feet, and, and this is uh, Brent Tan, member of the Conservation Commission. And this is a statewide project. Brent, will you come talk to the mic so that people at home can hear you? <laughs> sure. Thank you. This is a statewide project. It's happening in every county. So there'll be at least 16 to 18, maybe 20 deer exclosure plots put in. It, it was a grant from the US Forest Service to the Department of Forest and Parks. And it's for municipal forest land. So it'll give us an idea of the impact of uh, deer and forest growth. There'll be two study plots. One will be fenced in, another one will be marked out. They will not be fenced in, and it'll be a check one against the other. Um, well, I, I'll catch you later on who you sent that to. I didn't send it to anybody. You said you were gonna get them to reword that on their, their permission form. So I was waiting uh, for it to come through. Oh, I guess we had a misunderstanding. Okay. Because we'll work it out. I, I can get that very soon. Perfect. Well, thank you. That was informative. Where is where exactly is it located? This the, that spot. <clears throat> is it near the? Um, uh, yeah, if you're located, if you're not familiar with the forest, I'm very familiar. Okay, you go up Town Highway 43, uh -huh. and you go straight up the road, and then you take a, a sharp bend to the west. Uh huh. And then there's an apple orchard right there okay. that we've thinned in the apple orchard. Uh -huh. It's right near that apple orchard. Uh -huh. There's a junction of the um, two trails there. One is Town Highway 43, the other is a loop trail. Mm -hmm. It's right where those two trails oh, come okay. together. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. 
Select board concerns. Don. Well, not concerns, just updates. I, I met last week with Scott Johnson, our uh, village manager, and had a nice chat with him. And it's worth noting, we he was here at the last meeting, and I just thought I'd follow him up on his invitation to come in and talk. And uh, it's, we have a very, in my opinion, a very solid administrator working for the village right now and um, taking care of our wastewater plant, our, our water, uh, water delivery system, electrical system, and uh, yeah, just great, great individual. So it's a nice, nice conversation. And I also uh, did a little tour of the Duhamel pit with Eric and Kevin Barrows. Uh, that was just last week, so got a chance to see what's going on up there with the the different pits, pit one, two, and three, or phases one, two, and three. And uh, so that was. It was just nice to, to finally put some eyes on that and uh, and see what is, see what's really going on up there. So that's it. Thank you, Jess. Um, I I just had one. Um, I don't have any concerns. Just a follow up. Um, I'm just uh, I'd still like to explore the option of um, having the planning commission meetings on Zoom and. Um, and having them televised. And that's it. Thank you. Brian. I'm all set. Okay. Um, I appreciate the um, paving that was done on Randolph Road. <coughs> appreciate that. And just like to mention to people that we have a lot of stuff going on on social media. Um, I don't see the Facebook posts, but I'm sure that they are and stuff on Front Porch Forum. And just to contact your local town officials if you have questions because there may be information going out there that's not correct and Eric is open to questions uh, he's telling me that not very many people call him and I think you're very lonely there aren't you with <laughs> calls <laughs> lacking for things to do yes <laughs> <laughs> but give Eric and, and Todd a call if you have questions that's who has the best information they know exactly what's going on in town so thank you. Um, community concerns. Do we have people who have community concerns? So when you when you have a concern, would you address us, state your name, and come to the microphone? Not in that order. And, and is the, the mic is on. We just it doesn't amplify, right? Okay. And they don't. They just need to stand with the black tape. Oh, you don't do like close. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tony Cody from Cody Hill. I've been here probably since April. In this room? In this room. <laughs> and I'm not going to go away until the Cody Hill gets fixed properly. So I guess the question's for Don. What did you learn at the Duhamel pit? What did I learn at the pit? Um, I learned that we've got a, a huge store of gravel and sand there. Hopefully we're going to get our permit, our Act 250 permit soon, and we're going to be able to start extracting sand and gravel for the town. Um, I'm certainly talking to Eric and other people in the town, and Kevin in particular, it uh, seems pretty reasonable that we can extract sand and gravel cheaper than we can buy it from other suppliers. So kind of looking forward to that. And also looking forward to finding a way for the recreational opportunities up there to, to exist as well as the extraction of sand and gravel. I think those two entities can can work together, at least at this point. I haven't seen anything that tells me that they can't. So well, I think we have a tremendous resource there. Uh, I'd like the town to be able to use it. And so are we going to have gravel by fall, by before snow? I have you're talking to the wrong person. That's, no, that's a the lawyers question. down at Mount. So I think maybe maybe uh, maybe Manoff had to get involved. We need gravel on that road up there. That road is just like this, and I know what it's going to do in April. And that's a safety concern. There's not an ambulance that could come by there if they needed an ambulance up there this past April. And somebody's going to be held responsible if that happens, because that road is minus zero right now all the way through and there's no reason for it 
I'm supposed to be nice. My woman told me to be nice, but it's her. Yeah, you're not being nice. <laughs> I'd like to know what we're going to do. What? People have gravel. We pay taxes. Matter of fact, my municipal tax has doubled in the last five or six years. We seem to buy all kinds of new equipment. We're not using it. You get no answers? I'm they have no answers. Not sure what it is you want for an answer, Tony. There's a lot of we, answers. Have a, we have a budget. A I think we need some we gravel within our budget. We need some gravel on Cody Hill. I'll, I'll leave that for Kevin and his foreman and their determination. But that, that hill has gotten a lot of attention this year as it was scheduled to, to have done. But last they time, have more they have more work to do up there. They're gonna deburn the rest of the Cody Hill Road to, to help with getting water off the road in the springtime. Now what do you mean by deburn? So on the edge of the road that we grade it, the blade doesn't go completely out over the over the edge of the ditch. It you're grading the center of the road, basically. And then there's a, the portion of the outer side that the grass grows up. So you get this little berm of dirt. And in the rainstorm on any incline, the water holds inside of that instead of going off into the ditch. There's no it ditch. Right rides down the side of it. Right. There's and, no ditches. Right. Let them fit, let them fit. And, and we have more work to be done. Cody Hill is on our list. I, as I said, you're, we have a summer's worth of projects going on. A lot of the bigger ones are winding down. Ditch work and deburning is on our list. We're, we've done some already. We've done a lot, but we have more to do. And Cody you Hill told, You told me in April that it'd be done between July and September. It's September 20th. Mm -hmm. Is that going to happen? Uh, I don't dictate the day-to-day -day runnings of the highway department. I speak to my superintendent about that. I'm not impressed with the superintendent either. I'll leave it at that. Did you pass? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Any other community concerns? Tom, it's a surprise. Come on. Still here. After all this time. And I would like Tell to Tell us your name. Tom Cloutier. Thank you. I would like to know what we have to do to get the DRB and the Planning Council to have their meetings Zoom. Well, we, we, we've been in touch with our, the lawyer for the community, for the town, the municipal lawyer. We can't dictate to other committees, other councils, how to run their businesses. You can't tell them that Zoom? No. So what do, what do we do, what do I do as a resident? Stop talking to you folks because you can't do anything about it. So who do I talk to? You can talk to the various committees that you're interested in wanting them. The Zooming is, is, is another issue. You're talking about Zooming? Oh, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm talking about I mean, transparency talk overall. The, the overall, the Zooming is part, to me, transparency. And right now, this town has a problem with transparency. I, and I it's obvious by, by scheduling a meeting a, a important, a very important meeting uh, at night under a tent at the end of September in v Vermont. Okay, but the Zooming is a convenience. It's right. not about transparency. The it, Zooming is really more of a convenience. I'd have to disagree with you on that aspect. You don't think Zooming has it's, it's not necessarily, no, it doesn't well, necessarily. I, can tell, I will, this is how I look at it. I've been looking at it some, meet, some minutes of some meetings what I can. And there's some very troubling words that are in these meetings. Now, if they were Zoomed, we could take them and, and put them into context on who you said You have what. to be attend. Well, I don't- I No, don't you want, don't have to be- I don't want to get into a back and forth of this. The Zooming is a convenience. If you are interested in this happening, then you talk to the various committees okay, and that, councils. that's what I will do. And, right. All right, then there's, yeah, there's really no sense bringing Zooming up to end this board. Right. Then. I won't. All right, how do we get notification on front page forum that there's going to be these meetings? I think you put them on there. Well, I think you've done I a magnificent, I'm not a board member. I think you've done a magnificent job of uh, no, putting no, them on No, 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 I shouldn't forum. be doing that. I'm not, I don't want to do that. I, 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 can I interject? Um, I believe at some point last, last winter, and I think this has something to do with a, a change in administration, like the administrative, um, Office here, but we we were putting them on um, front porch forum, yes. right? And then we stopped. Am I? Because we decided to do that last 
winter. So we, something, we maybe just, it fell off the plate somewhere. Our focal I point has not been to do government business on a social media platform. It's just announcing a meeting, though, right? It is agendas. Our meetings are, are set, the first meeting following town meeting in March. Okay. And those meetings are dictated by, in this case, first and third Mondays of the month, starting at 6 p.m. We don't have to announce or warn meetings any time after that for a regular meeting. Special meetings are different, obviously. The agenda posting is what Tom is talking about. We post our agendas and all our activities on our town website. We are working very hard to get folks to focus on coming to our town website. Social media, in my opinion, is not the place to be conducting government business at all. I agree with you. By putting a notice where there's 4,700 subscribers cannot hurt to have people come to learn that, again, that's part of transparency. Part of transparency is getting to the information to the people and so that it's easiest that you, that for the people to get it. Not easiest for the, for the government to do it. It's the easiest for the people to get it. And it's, that's fine. That's a great thing that you've got going there on your, on your site. That's 500 people. Transparency, in my opinion, Tom, is about doing government business in a public forum. Yeah. That's what we do here. We talk about yeah. government process, okay. and we bring all of the business of the day to the select board for the decisions they need yeah. to make. Well, so as far as transparency goes, what we do is out in the open. Our yeah. books are open. We're being audited as we speak. Everything we do is a matter of public information with very few exceptions. So transparency is about what occurs in this room. And, and, and we've had trouble. We've had problems with that because there have been people just finding out after Bridge Street occurred, after the, the, these, the Jersey Heights occurred. People found out about that because the only information they had were in your little government. It's not not, it is it is our little government, Tom. Well, I, it, sometimes I, I, this it is seems a, it's like a, it's not. Yeah. That's the problem. Some of it's a philosophical debate, honestly. Yeah, right. We are guided by law. We have to follow that law, and we watch it very closely. And if we yeah. make a mistake, I'll be the first one to admit to it. Yeah. But to go outside the bounds of the law just for the sake of throwing stuff out there, we have places we advertise our meetings. That's so right. we put that information out there. It is there for the public to get if there's an interest by them, democracy is a participatory sport. Yeah. They have to want to look on our website to see what our meetings are. Our calendar is on the very front page. You click on any of the dates and you'll see the meeting coming up. I, to go and do more and more and more, what happens the week that I forget to put it on the front court form and I now being hiding something? I, this is what I'm afraid of, Tom, is that social media is not a place for conducting public business. If you're afraid government of business. taking flack, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. Believe me, I'm I mean, not afraid of flack. I'm telling you all. Oh, I'm a more retired more police officer. Money. I've had my, my share of flack thrown at me. It, it, this is not, should be not be discussed. It's what? not on our agenda. If I read the thing the other night, the stuff that's agenda. Can you tell me one here. reason why you Because the lawyer said that. so. It's free. Right? Because we don't think it's the right place to put it. We've got it where we voted. We voted to do it back at town meeting. The people voted for this to put it these places, and it's there. And I believe that anybody that wants the agenda can ask to get there. Oh yeah. So they, we don't they, we don't need to put it on something to, they where they have to go do it. We can get, do it if we have to. It's there. The point of it is, is 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 people can get it if they want to. I know because you know it's you don't have is to that, go door is to door. That what you want though? The people can get it if they want it. Or do you want the information to get to as many people as you possibly can? I want the people that want it to get it. What about the but rest let of them that come can? and get it? So Tom, how about the people that are Tom, home, that so can't? Tom, we're not gonna we're not gonna do a back and forth yeah. here. Thank yeah. you. Can I can I just say I'll one see. thing? Sure. So Tom, I'm I'm certainly sympathetic to what you're saying. I understand what you're trying to say. I will say in defense of Judy in particular, who's done an awful lot of work with our with our website and Eric, um, it's it's all there. If you go to the town website, I went there just last week because I knew it had been updated. 
right at the very right in the very front there's a calendar there you can very quickly scan it you can find the meetings the website is updated before I got on this board as you well know I came to meetings for a year and I was able to find the agenda for all the meetings very quickly I will admit like any website there's a little bit of hunting the first time but once you do it once you're you're good to go I I you know, where does it stop? I, I, I you know, we're, we're putting the website out there. We're putting the information out there. It's, it's there to be had. If you can get on Front Porch Forum, you can get on, on the website. I mean, in both cases, you're using, you're using the, uh, the internet to access the information. Do we put it on Facebook? Do we put it on Instagram? I mean, how many things do we want our town employees to be doing? And I would just say, okay. in their defense, that they're, they're getting it all out there. It's there, it's available for people to find. And, and I applaud you in particular. Yeah. Thank you very much for putting on a front porch forum. And that's a good, that's, that's great help. And maybe somebody might want to put it on Facebook as well. But you know, getting the word out there is important, but I think the town's doing what, what they can very reasonably do. They, can they do more? Yes, we can always do more, but at some point you've got to, you it's, a say, new law that I'm looking yeah. for. it's a little embarrassing yeah. when you look today in Stowe's, every board meeting is on front page forum. And, and every board is being Zoom. You get Johnson in front page forum, and their boards are being Zoom. It's a little embarrassing that this town doesn't do it. But I'll continue. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. And Julia, that has nothing to do with the work that you guys doing on your other website. It is improved a thousand percent. It's really great. And I, I you asked me a month ago that they be five hundred people on that, I would be done. I would not ever believe it. So you're doing it. Great Sir, job. would you like to come forward please? <coughs> I'm David Ring. And I'd like to know if anybody here select board anyone who's been asked by the planning commission to hold that meeting here is anyone because i just found out the planning the planning, com the planning, planning commission is responsible for asking or setting this planning council is responsible for setting their own time well, the and planning, place. That, that council is part of this town part of this village now is anyone on that council was asked to have this room or any of this building that we pay taxes on for that meeting, rather than hold it up at the Copley Country Club on September 27th, when it's probably gonna be maybe 50 degrees and dark. So bring your flashlight, your coat, your mittens. Has anyone from that organization called the Planning Commission the planning ask. council doesn't yeah. ask the select board if they can use this. Well, room. then who does? They they make the arrangements themselves. They don't have to ask the select board okay, for use well, of the room. Who would they ask? Have they asked? Is anyone in this room a person who would have been asked or know that name? They have you're, not. You're the administrator. You're the administrator. Mm -hmm. You should know. Yeah. They, they have not reserved this room for the meeting on the 27th. It was properly warned with a time, date, and place, and that place was designated by the council themselves. To be at the Copley Country Club. That's where they chose to meet for that meeting. I think you'll find the next meeting after that, or meetings shortly thereafter, we'll be back in this forum here because of the very reasons you're talking about the early uh, dusk and the, the temperature and whatnot. But this is not out of the realm of what they've done in the past. They've always gone through the end of September with their meetings. Um, and again, they, they didn't start meeting up there until COVID was upon us, and they found that as a great place to do it and still hold in person meetings because of the open air scenario. So. But to answer your question, no, they have not reserved this room for that meeting, but it wasn't warned for this room. So uh, that's why. So it has to be warned and the time has to be set for that. When, when meetings are warned, they have to be time, date, and location. That's specific from the statute. And the, the council themselves have chosen to meet up there at the country club one more meeting, at least, that I'm aware of. What would it take to change that? A rewarning of the hearing. Uh, that would push all the timelines further out. Uh, the public hearing schedule for this body in early November would have to be pushed out further into December. And by the time we get out there, we're buried in the budget season. And this, like I said earlier, this hearing 
when it comes for the in front of the board for final approval uh, is going to be a lengthy affair. We aren't even going to have any other budget items or any items on that agenda. It will simply be the hearing for those zoning bylaws. So um, if we they stop uh, cancel the, the meeting at the country club on the 27th, they have to rewarn the meeting. Uh, Todd is more familiar with the timelines on that than I am. So. I don't want to speak for my board. They're not here. You never right. had an opportunity to be warned of this uh, discussion, obviously. But we can't fit those meetings in this room. There's going to be 100 people at that meeting. The legal occupancy of this room is 35 people. That's the fire code. We're at the fire code right now. If you look at those meetings, there's 40, 50, 60 people there the last few meetings. There's going to be 100 in this next meeting. If we were going to hold this meeting here, the first third we get in, this, the second third we pull the way off the sidewalk. Is that the public meeting you're looking for? That's not the public meeting I'm trying to run. The tent is a safe spot for COVID. You can fit 100 plus people. It's now got sides to keep some warmth in. The weather's really bad. You move next door into the village-owned clubhouse. It's a village. It's a public building, just like this is a public building. And the council represents the village of Morrisville, the trustees, and the select board. The meeting in a public building in a public place in a location that's COVID-friendly and a building that's size appropriately to handle the audience. I don't understand the issue. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I Thank you. Come up. Hi, my name is Kelly Benson. My concern is Mac Miller Road. Um, when the road was established, I don't know how long ago, uh, there was only five lots on the road. Now there are one, two, about nine. Um, if you see the map, Raymond Eric. You can point to it, Mac Miller Road. Yep. Okay. Right where the R is in road is where the town is saying that the end of their road is. Um, their line there says it goes all the way to the end. They're saying their turnaround should be at the corner of my lot. Um, we have a water line that goes up on the right side, and they're taking their turnaround over the water line. So my concern is it needs to be moved. Um, the furthest lot on the right is also getting subdivided into two more lots. So there's going to be potentially more, more houses. I'm looking to build after subdividing my parents' lot. Um, you know, it, it's becoming a, a bigger development. And I think where the road is ended right now is not suitable for um, everyone that lives up there. Uh, like I said, I got to figure out where my water shutoff is going to be. I got to figure out where electrics can come through. Um, you know, I, I know Eric, Eric pulled out the deeds. Um, there are conflicting deeds. I think it was Kevin, was it Kevin who sent up the mm -hmm. stakeout? He was up there with uh, one of his assistants. They staked out the, the land. And I asked for the copy of the deed. And it proved that the stakes that they put out were in different locations where they should have been. Um, you know, Kevin's a great guy. I think that. Staking may not be the right position for him to do. Um, I've heard two things tonight. That it's a statute for town surveyor to survey the road. I think that needs to get done. Um, and uh, private roads, okay. So they're saying that the end of Mac Miller Road, there's a private road that goes off of it. That private road is not named. Todd and Eric both mentioned tonight that for a subdivision to happen, Private road needs to be named. We have four houses that are driveways off of this private road that are going by Mac Miller Road, not a, this so-called private road. Um, that's, that's my concern. I think that the town should review documents, get a surveyor up there, and potentially you know, consider extending the right of way, if it's not already, to the end of the road. The town already claims more mileage to the end of that road than what the deed say. So, in a way, they've already claimed eminent domain to the end of the road. The, the, who has claimed eminent domain? The, the town. town. By claiming mileage for the, from the state, they're claiming 0.39 miles um, to where the so-called turnaround is. It's about 0.26. So, in a way, they've already claimed eminent domain to the end of the road. So can you explain what you're asking from the board? Uh, a couple Sorry, things. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
get a survey up there. Okay. See where their actual turnaround is supposed to be, um, because it's been moved a couple times. And when you're saying there, are you talking about the developer? Or are you talking about the town? The town. The town. Okay. Yeah, because the town road. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think we need to get a town okay. surveyor up there yeah. to figure out where the actual points are. Okay. And to consider moving it to the end of the road. Um, like I said, there's there's four houses that are off this so-called private road that's unnamed. Potentially two more. Myself will be at the the first, not not off the private road, but right on the end. You know, from a develop standpoint, I think it's a logical thing to do to, to continue the road all the way through instead of stopping it basically in the middle of the road. Right now, heavy machinery is being backed up over the water line, Marsan Co-op, and that water line is 40, 40 years old. Heavy machinery should not be moving on that water line. So. Do you have any, anything to add, Eric? Well, I've been with, working with Steve and Kelby on this for the better part of the year, uh, trying to determine where the end of the road is. We did the deed research. There's a pin location that they're familiar with up there that uh, from that pin they're defined in the deeds, uh, measurements up the, the drive or up the road, uh, defining the circle itself, the center of the circle. So the deeds specify where the center of the circle is. And I'm, I'm happy to spend some money on a surveyor to come up and survey the road to get the actual and accurate mileage for the road. It's been reported the same to the state for many years, but there has been no eminent domain take of properties up there. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to, to do follow through with that. Uh, we'll have a surveyor survey the road, verify the pin locations up through there, uh, and define the center of the circle. The circle is defined as a 55 foot diameter circle. So 110 feet across at the end, end of the road by deed that gives us that, that area to have a turnaround. I will tell you that that is larger than what is necessary for the equipment to turn around. We've never pushed out the edges of that. The question here is where is the center of the circle and are we pushing out further on the Kelby and, and the Benson property, we'll call it the Benson property, but further out on the Benson property than we should be? Are we outside of the bounds of the right of way? Um, should we be pushing further? This is Heather is their neighbor across the road. She owns a property directly across from the Bensons and the, the traffic circle, the right of way extends onto her land as well. So she's impacted by this as well. And they went up to try and locate the pin. Uh, located a pin. I think Kelby was present when they did that. Yeah, but like um, I said, you know, Kevin was uncertain of where the stick should have been put. Okay. I, so, I would like to say that. Come, I, in, come and introduce yourself. Oh <laughs> I'm the old lady on the hill. Mac Miller and I are the oldest <laughs> residents on the hill. Um, 40, and you, 44 years. And you are? Heather Payne. And that turnaround that you're talking about now, Eric, this will be the third time it, it's been changed. The, the whole road is Mac Miller Road. It needs to end. There's four houses down there. There are two more lots. There's lots of room to turn around at the end of the road. That's where it should be at the end of the road because they're all using that address is Mac Miller Road. You can't have any gravel. What? You can't have any gravel when they have circles. Well, yeah, I don't want the circle. I don't want, I don't want my lawn gone. And then I also, we did get them to extend the road properly to what we originally thought um, past Montcalm's driveway. But Mac Miller has refused to cut down his tree. Mac Miller has no right to say you can't cut this tree down. It's in the right of way of the road. My trees are more than 25 feet from the middle of the road. That's how I planned my property. And I can't believe I'm having to fight over this. This is the third time. There was a nice circle there. The town would come up and they would do a circle and go right back down the hill. No issues. And they came and they built the road up. I now have flooding in the spring up to two feet of water because my road has been, um, roadside has been raised up. It is eroding, it needs to be fixed because it's starting to go down. 
But I have two, almost two feet of water there in the spring because they raised the road. They raised Benny's road side and my side, nowhere else. And damn it, stop spending money making the turn. Do it at the end of the road and get it over with. Now the turn is where like where they deposit Halfway the snow. Halfway through the road. Is that where they deposit snow? Is that what's going on? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and previous to that, there was a circle and they came around and then it just pushed the snow off to the side just like the rest of the road. And now I don't understand really why that was ever changed. <clears throat> but if you've got six houses down further beyond where they're talking about taking our land to make a turnaround, wouldn't it make more sense on Mac Miller Road to do the turnaround at the end? And this is the third time. Then you're gonna have the fourth time? It's a waste of money. And I pay a lot of money for taxes. Thank you. Thank you. I will say uh, one more thing. That, that private road off the extension of so-called Mac Miller Road already has the deeded 55 feet radius as well. So that's already in there. So I'm happy to let a survey come out and identify it. I, I will tell you this much. This is not a town initiated initiative okay this is not us okay this was steve coming to us to say we're pushing too much snow onto that side of the road and his son's gonna they're gonna subdivide so his son can put a house in and then the general location where his driveway is going to intersect with the end of the road is where most of the snow gets piled so we went back up to try and uh, identify the, the the center of the road and whatnot and it led to deed research and mitzi mitzi did a tremendous amount of work uh, and got all the deed references there. So I'm happy to turn that over to a surveyor and have that road surveyed from uh, the pavement all the way up through and they can verify the pin location. It's not a new survey, so it's a verifying pin location and verify the end of the road as to where it's supposed to be and the center of the circle at the end of the road. But the end of the road where we stopped plowing is where we've stopped plowing for decades. It hasn't changed that I'm aware of. This is the same location we've pushed snow for a long time, but it's Steve is concerned that we're pushing too far off to the right-hand side and outside of our right-of-way on the, his property. And that's where this all started. We've, we've been sorting through it for a while, trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, I'm, I'm happy to get a surveyor to, to finally answer this and then mark the center of the turnaround as the absolute end of the road, and we'll go from there. And that's the best I can do for you. So I don't think it's just a matter of taking over a road. We need that road has to be brought up to town specs. It's, it's not, Brian, I'm sorry to cut you out. It's not even that. That's not the issue. The issue is the survey. Where does the town road actually end? That is the point They want to question. go further. They're, they're suggesting because folks have addresses that go out beyond there still using Mac Miller Road, that if that is a pri actual private road, then they should rename it and change their addresses. But that depends on where the end of Mac Miller Road officially is, and a surveyor can pinpoint that. It'll take us some money, spending some money for a surveyor to define that roadway, and and uh, we'll put that circle right where it's supposed to be. And um, is it possible that, um, is the other party involved, are they okay with the road being extended like to, to, to their property, who knows? Well, right now they're paying they're paying privately, and Mac and Montcalms, well, that house has changed hands like four or five times, they were paying privately for plowing, when in fact the town should have been doing that from the time it was developed. That, that depends on right. where the survey says the end of the road is. So that's, that's what's and, up, and that's the question here. That's and then is it, like, if it determines that, so there's two possibilities, like one is at the end of the road is at your all's, property and the other option is that it's, it's the other possibility down. that it's further down if it's sure. further down like end of story we do the turn around there no big deal but if it's determined to be at your all's location then is it still possible that the town says okay we can extend this or no i think we're going to have a legal battle ahead of us but I, i'm not yeah. going to i don't want to go down yeah. there I, let's okay. see what the survey yeah. says yeah uh why should you know, have a legal battle? So I would think they would if, be happy. If, 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 in fact, mm -hmm. we've stopped the town road shy of where it should actually be, mm -hmm. 
I'm going to tell you, I've read the deeds. And the deeds specifically talk about specific pins and their, their location on the properties. And the pin that they talk about in reference to the circle is at the circle. But I don't want to sit here and argue with our neighbors. This isn't what we're here to do. They're bringing it to your attention. They're concerned about it. We've been working on it for some time now. And I'm, I'm happy to get the surveyor to go up there and confirm location at the end of the road. And if it is further out, as they say, then we'll go to the next step from there. But for right now, we really can't, just, I don't want to, it's not, it's not for us to argue here. Mm -hmm. this, this no, is, no, we're not arguing. We, no. We want, where does Mac Miller Road end? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what it amounts to. Yeah, because and that's where again, the, And again, though, where the circle is, the circle. Come on up to the oh, microphone, Steve. I'm Steve Benson. Um, we just want to know where Mac Miller officially ends. But where the circle is now, it's over the water line from Morristown Co-op. That's a problem, too. That's what we're trying to eliminate. Because the water line is going to go, pretty much going to go, right underneath his driveway, as it is. Mm -hmm. But it's all on the right-hand side. But the houses past the circle it is now, all on wells. There's no water lines there. No, Mac has... Oh, Mac Miller, yeah, but Mac his... his, his, his Mark Combs, they're yeah. both on the water line. I heard she was walking, she heard she was not. Was I know Mac Miller is, because his, his is in the book. <laughs> so, so technically, Mac Miller Road could be cleared to the yeah. end anyways. It, it's just that the town might have taken over to where they stopped. I don't, I don't no, know. No, I don't either. But if, it, <laughs> if there's a deed there, if they're putting snow there, it must be somebody giving permission to do it. They had to give a deed, right? The, de the deeds identify the location of the circle center. Where the snow is put. It identifies the circle center. There's a location so from a pin, 15, 15, 15 yeah. feet this way and 35 yeah. feet. It's, it's a... I read the deeds, but again, none of us are the professional surveyors, no. and I think we're just spinning our wheels here tonight. We'll get a surveyor up there to identify those those places and put the stakes in the ground where they belong, and we'll go from there. And you don't need any action from us. We do not. This is community concerns. You can't take an action under right. this mm -hmm. under this item. So this is just yeah. an awareness thing we bring to your attention, and we're we're working on it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks All for right. coming. Anyone else? Sorry. I wonder if I could be acknowledged. Oh, oh wait a minute. Can, hold on a second. Can, can I be acknowledged? Yes. Yes, Henry. Would um, you introduce yourself? You. My name is Henry Hamill. Thank you. Um, I wanted to point out, um, and I think it was Todd Thomas that said it, I didn't rec I recognized his voice. So I think that's who made the comments about the uh, amount of time that's going to take to talk about what's going on on the 27th up at the Copley Country Club. And I'd like to point out that on that day, um, well, tomorrow, if I look at the sunset tomorrow, it happened at 6.55. Uh, four, I think. If I, you might call me wrong if I, if you look, but it's right about that. If you look outdoors right now, it's dark. The last meeting we had up there, we were sitting underneath the tent, and people were using the flashlight on their phone to be able to see the notes that they had taken and the minutes that had been written, along with the agenda and paperwork that were handed out. If you, have, if you have a, a thought about what's going to happen on the 27th, by the time we've got a chance to have conversation, meaningful to get input from the public, it's going to be dark again. I don't really care about the fact that you got to re-warn the meeting. To me, it should have been thought of ahead of time and put in a place where you could accommodate a number of people that are going to show up. And I think Tom's uh, Todd is correct that you're going to have over 100 folks there. First of all, I don't know how you're going to fit 100 people underneath that tent. But anyway, it should be held in a room with, with lights and some 
warmth so that you don't freeze. I, I, no one seems to get that point, and I was willing to do something about it. Those, those boards, ultimately, if you think about it, they report to you, the select board. People have been coming to you and talking to you because the conversations that they've been having outside of this meeting have not been listened to or acted upon concerning what I've heard called transparency. I don't want to get into a Zoom meeting. I'm talking about the fact that you ought to be able to accommodate the people showing up at what is my opinion and what has been said here and elsewhere as a very important meeting. I don't know what else to say. I have a feeling that What's been said so far is on deaf ears. Um, I, I'll, I'll be quiet and listen to some, hopefully somebody's got some input about what I just said. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Well, do we do want to address to what Samir said? Well, I, I mean, so basically what, sorry. Go ahead. ahead. So basically what we found out from our lawyer is that we have no um, jurisdiction or whatever you would call it to dictate to the um, the other committees about where they hold the whole meeting. Correct. So I agree. I think personally that if a group of people would prefer to have the meeting indoors in the lit place, um, I would prefer that. But I don't have any. It sounds like we don't have any jurisdiction to dictate that. So. That's where it ends, right? So who do we who do we appeal to? We appeal to the planning council and the DRB. <coughs> and how does that get on the agenda? Do you is the planning council <coughs> open to changing the location? I mean, we've heard that here at this meeting, at in this building, at this meeting. I mean, for the last couple months at least. Mm -hmm. So I, I just feel like as a select board mem member, I need to understand where if somebody wants to make that change, where they're going and what the avenue for change is, because I am helpless to do anything about it. So um, I'm looking at Todd. Um, does that mean that, that people who are interested in getting the meeting location changed just have to talk to you, Todd? Is the, is the planning council open to that? I can't speak to the board. I mean, this yeah. wasn't a warm discussion. The board right. has no the opportunity to be here. And I, I'm going to cut Todd off and just right. say that is an unfair question to ask of Todd. He staffs these meetings. And I understand he, he has the intimate knowledge of his own bylaws and all these processes and whatnot. But is the chair of the planning council and the other members who decide where they want to hold their meetings? Todd works for them. So Todd is putting the meeting where they're asking him to put it. Mm -hmm. As far as what's on the agenda, all five board members have email addresses. Yeah. Not town email addresses, but they're, they're public officials. They're appointed by this board. There's a separation between these boards and the authorities of the boards such that during all processes, there is no undue influence from the select board to either one of those boards or the other way around. That's why the select board does not have the authority in statute to make them meet wherever they want to or where they should meet or where you think they should meet. And just saying, we're putting Todd on the spot at these meetings. The planning council is not here and this is not a warrant agenda item. So the frustrations are being heard that, and that's a great time to do it during community concerns. But to open a debate over the topic here is improper. I'm not trying to open a debate. I'm just trying to find out the avenue for um, how it gets changed. And so I think I'm clear and I'm sorry, Todd, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. But we literally heard the same concern for months in this room, and and there's hasn't been an answer. So from what I understand, if anyone wants the meeting venue changed, they have to appeal to the members of the planning council and the members of the DRB, right. and um, that would be, for instance, that would be, that would be the correct route. I mean, okay, so it'd be, there shouldn't be a parallel universe here where this board comes and listens to the planning council complaints every two weeks. You have complaints with the planning council, you have to go to the planning council. That's the board with the authority to change things. The planning council has got a set agenda. They meet through September. It becomes involved every year because of COVID. They move back and set up as October. 
I mean, if you think I want to stack 100 chairs on September 27th and for the meeting and then clean them up at four in the dark, you're nuts. I mean, I've met in this room with the DRB the entire time during the pandemic. The DRB met maskless in this room during the pandemic. The planning council met outside wearing masks. It's a different board. I staff and vote. I just work here. I just want to, could I, Don, Tom, Don, Tom. I, I just want to go on the record saying, because it was said not too long ago that these concerns have gone on deaf ears. They haven't. Jess is correct. In the last couple of meetings, I know I, for one, have brought this up. In fact, I'm just going to read the minutes that we just approved tonight at the last meeting. I said, I'm still concerned about the planning council meetings as to where they are held and would like to know why the planning council meetings are not on Zoom. So it has not gone on deaf ears and I want the public to know that the select board is hearing this loud and clear. I am frustrated. I'm certainly frustrated when I get legal advice, legal counsel that tells us or tells me as a select board member that I can't tell our planning council what to do. It's as, just as frustrating to me as it is to you. Uh, frankly, kind of surprising too, but it is that is what it is. Um, but again, I just don't want people to say that this hasn't gone on deaf ears. If we're listening, we are talking, we're doing lots of talking, you know, outside of meetings, and we're certainly talking about this in meetings as well. Um, I, I think Jess is right. I think, you know, we need to, I need to, I have, we need to as well talk to planning council members and, uh, and express our concerns. I, I agree, whoever, the, the fellow that was up there, Henry, you know, it's, uh, you know, sunset tomorrow is at 6.51. It's, um, it is kind of, uh, it is concerning why we're doing what we're doing. But and I also, when the last meeting we had, I also contacted the BLTC to find out what our legal responsibility was right. in over. May I finish? Yes. In overseeing the uh, council meetings, and and I got the same information that we got from our attorney. So we all do different things to find out information when we're getting hammered every every meeting about something that we don't have control over. So um, let we we have other people here who haven't spoken. Let's let them speak first. Yeah. Ma'am, would you like to come up, please? May I clarify what I just said? Yes. No, we we want it. We want to move on. We have another woman. We have several people here who want to speak. I I understand that, but Henry, when I said things went on deaf Henry, ears, I wasn't speaking that. about you. Henry, we many have, people. Have, we have time. Thank you. Go ahead. My name's Laura Green. Um, I just have a question as to this new, uh, what is it, nine unit uh, thing going in just down from Best Street. Um, have there been any kind of traffic impact studies? I know it's already zoned high density. Um, there's nothing I can do about that personally, but I know that you know the history of that corner and that area has been, before there was ever this other new thing coming in, there were, several accidents ramming into the guardrail that I don't know will be there when they do this new thing. But I, that's just my question. Has anybody really looked at the impact of not only, I understand the new development is just one way in at that point, just above Alexander's house um, and one way out further up. Um, but what, that seems like a lot of confusing traffic right there where it's kind of a blind, people are coming over that hill, they're still wanting to go fast even though they're off the bypass. It's a, it's a huge concern I have. I walk to work sometimes and I have to walk down that side of the road to keep moving and wait to get across, you know, before school, the school traffic. Um, so I just, it seems like, like it's gonna be a really dangerous situation. What, what I can tell you is that those things don't come to us. Mm -hmm. So frequently, we, for me, I can speak for myself, I'm finding out when the public is finding out, mm -hmm. unless I go to a DRB meeting. And, um, and someone else can fill, fill in the blanks here, okay. but that process all, and I don't know the, uh, how many units have to go before the DRB mm -hmm. for approval, but there's a certain number that have to go to them for approval. And, also, Act 250 
jump kicks in, and then there have to be traffic studies. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm assuming you're talking the one that's being built right now, not the new one they're talking about tonight? Well, I'm talking about what both. happens when both of those exist. Yeah. And that's a, you know. it's a good, I think, I think it's a better question for the DRB, okay. but I don't know yep. for sure. That's I what would, I would say. I would encourage say. you to come to the October 12th DRB meeting. So probably notifications went out last Friday about mm -hmm. that project. You may receive one. I'm not sure exactly where you live. Uh, oh, but that's true. Yeah, yeah 6 o'clock, uh, the 12th, the DRB okay. will consider those, those concerns. All right, there are, and there are multiple projects down there. I'm not sure which nine units you're speaking of. There are a couple of nine units in that area mm -hmm. that are coming up in front of the DRB. Yeah, this is the greenhouse that hasn't been paid. Oh, the one we were just talking about earlier. Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, so the DRB um, will take those traffic concerns and mm -hmm. mitigations into account. They, I can tell you from having relived uh, many, many hearings on the Jersey Heights uh, Riverside Village development mm -hmm. that the truck route pulled so much traffic off Jersey Heights that basically what we're adding back in with these little projects is just like a, it's a splash in the lake, pretty much is what D-Trend said. There's no impact from these smaller projects. Because basically the issue is the capacity of the road and the road functions <laughs> pre-truck or pre-2013 at X amount of vehicles today, I think it was like 7,000, and it's seeing 4,000 now. So until we get back to that point, we can't legally say we don't have capacity, because you know what, the developer can say, but 10 years ago, you proved you had the capacity, the road's the same, you used to, you used to, you used to accommodate almost quite the truck. Mm -hmm. So there's not gonna be a lot of, I can't speak to the board, and those questions should, should go to the DRB, not happen here, obviously. Okay. But yeah, come to the board, I'm, I'm sure we'll take yeah. your concerns very seriously. Uh, most of the board members are good at what they do, and some of them have been there 40 years, Great. 30 years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Kristen Marriott. Um, I really like Jess Graham's suggestion at the last select board meeting that if we can at least Zoom the planning council and DRB or whatever, we could have them video recorded so that it could at least be archived and people could then not have to rely on written minutes because it's hard i know for todd to do everything at once run the meeting write the minutes whatnot so i really liked that idea i think that would be good and um that's totally workable by the way you want to record the minutes and the meeting. that may not be the case if that's workable we're, financially it really comes down to what you want to um, that's that's i think we're getting into areas here that i'm not prepared to go into because sure. when you start talking about recording and then having data storage this is a Sarah Haskins conversation as well. We're talking money, we're talking technical support. This equipment doesn't belong to us. This is all GMA TV. We don't record meetings. Meetings are recorded by GMA TV and reproduced or edited and produced out onto uh, a social media platform. YouTube. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, too many of them to keep track of. Uh, and and it's, it's nice, it, it, people watch that, they do. They, they use it as a convenience again, but it's not something the town has ever done and if we're going to go down that road, that's a lot of discussion because there's a lot of money behind that. Okay, I'm just throwing that out. It's not a, a, a no. I'm just saying there are many considerations with that. Just just to yeah. follow up on what Eric's saying, so if we had a video recording, then we have to store it, mm -hmm. and then if you want to see it, then we have to have someone providing that time for you to see it. So there's a big. It would be a, besides money going into recording and so on. There's also a big process that has to go into that. It so wouldn't be something as easy as just going to the town website and clicking on a link and watching the video? I don't know. <laughs> okay. And my other question is, since the Planning Council and DRB are considered subservient boards, how come the select board cannot ask them to do things? We've been That's advised by the municipal lawyer. And part of it is... Some of it is, has to do with all of these boards. Our board is elected. The other boards are all volunteer. And if we start, this is my personal opinion, we start getting into telling our uh, volunteer boards how to run and how to run themselves and how to conduct themselves, I think we're gonna have fewer people wanting to step into those positions. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's just my opinion here. Todd? Quick comments. The DRB and planning are different than the other town boards. They're jointly appointed by the village of the oh, town. So they serve both the trustees and the select board. They have a mom and a dad kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because the village is still a municipal corporation, so is the town. So those boards are appointed by both bodies. So they, they answer to both bodies. They're appointed by both bodies. That could be unappointed or reappointed by both bodies. So they're different than 
the Conservation Commission is a creature of the town. The other town board is a creature of the Rec Commission, and the head one is a creature of the town. The DRB and planning, because the because Morrisville is still an incorporated village, serves legally both bodies. So it's a, it's a different animal. It would have to be a decision for both. 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 Yep. Gotcha. The only way to have the both boards accountable directly to the select board would be had to have the select board and trustees uh, board vote under section 24 BSA, I think 4207, to be a joint planning commission. And if there's a joint board, the village loses its say, and just the select board controls, but the village isn't gonna vote to lose its say anytime soon. So that's, that's your issue. Your issue is the village town issue. You're not a merged municipality. That's the main issue. But if I can re just reiterate from earlier, the, in statute, these are these are things that have been tried and tested for years. The statute creates that autonomy of sorts with each of the boards such that there is no undue influence from one board over another. Mm -hmm. They work independently. They hear from the public in, in very similar forms. They have, it's not that they haven't heard the concerns about the meeting location and the time and all that. They have. Uh, they hear it. But it's, it is just simply an explanation tonight that this board doesn't have the legal right to tell the boards how to do it, and there's a reason for that. And it's really about keeping that process clean. So planning develops a plan, they present it to the board for approval, and then if it's approved, it's a bylaw the DRB enforces. And that's it's really, the, it's, the statute tries to keep it as clean as possible. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks, I, I, I'll look a little more into the question about the recording too. Okay. Oh, we have someone up on the screen. Yes. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Christopher Mox. Um, I, I apologize because I'm a newer resident to uh, Morrisville. So the, the, I've tried to find this on the website and I, I haven't yet. But um, in, in part, I just learned that the uh, planning board is uh, volunteered. My question is what, how does the public have? influence over that uh, if they're a, a a body so it, it's a participation sport if we the public uh, of the town want to um have some say in what they're doing how do we go about doing that is does anyone attend the meetings to, Eric, you know. attend the meetings speak to the planning council, speak to the planning council speak directly to, at your meeting i don't know if you heard that christopher okay yep okay thank you Thank you. Okay. I um, make one comment about the, uh, the, the 27th meeting. I talked to the Secretary of State uh, representative, and they, with the warning, once the warning is given out, to make a change on that, like we were suggesting a, 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 a place where they were having it, you had to do that 14 days prior to the meeting. And if you, uh, so we could have done it like last week or so, whatever. And if you don't do that and you make a change, then you have to scratch and uh, scratch and re reschedule the meeting. Yeah, it's so, very prescribed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And thank you for letting us know finally that it's a legal reason why we can't have you folks. Kind of and that's, so. that's only come up in the last seven days or so. Yeah. So before then, no, Any other business to become to come before the board? Yeah. <clears throat> I find that premature general public knowledge of the contractual agreement will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I move that we for, that we enter executive session to discuss the town's contractual agreement under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A, 1A of the Vermont statutes to include Eric Dodge, town administrator. I further find that premature general public knowledge of real estate purchase or lease options will clearly place the town in a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I further move that we enter executive session to discuss the real estate purchase or lease options under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A2 of the Vermont statutes to include Eric Dodge, town administrator. Do I hear a second to the motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. Did I forget to call on you? I did make reference to the VTLC. VLCT. VLTC. Yeah. Vermont Cities of Vermont, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Cities and Towns. Mm -hmm. Vermont yes. League of Cities and Towns. <laughs>